Okay, this is going to be part two of how to find the limits of rational functions. Now, if you haven't done it yet, definitely watch part one because it will explain about holes and asymptotes and how they fit into the functions. So watch that one, uh, and if you do that, then this will make some sense. Now, what we'll look at is two things. How to find uh, uh, the limits of functions that involve cubics, and also a problem where you have to use synthetic division. But let's start with a couple of cubic ones first. Now, just a reminder, if you have the difference in two cubes, uh, or the sum of two cubes, uh, the cubic formulas would either be x cubed minus a cubed, or x cubed plus a cubed. And from your Algebra 2 days, you'll remember that the uh, x minus a looks like this, the x plus a looks like this one over here. So we'll work one of each one and kind of show you one where the limit exists and one where the limit doesn't exist. Now for the first problem, let's assume we have this. Uh, you want to find the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed minus 8 uh, divided by x minus 2. Now again, your first step, just like in the first video, is to go ahead and try to plug in the 2. If you can plug in the 2 and it works, great, you're done. Uh, but in this case, if you plug 2 in in the bottom, you've got 2 minus 2, you've got division by 0, so you've got a problem in the bottom. So you've got to find some way to factor out that x minus 2 if you can. Now, again, just a reminder on these, uh, if you have x cubed minus 8, you can think of that as being x cubed minus 2 cubed. So, if you think of it like this, then since it's an x minus x, you'll use this formula up here on the left. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll set this up and rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 2 and take the numerator and change it into this formula right here. Well, in this case, um, x is x and a is equal to 2. So in our formula, the way we're setting this up, uh, this right here would be x and this right here would be a. So a is equal to 2. So just plug that into your formula. So this will factor into, um, this would be x minus 2, and again I'm just using this formula up here on the left. Then you've got the x thing squared, then plus a times x, which would be 2x, and then finally you've got the a thing squared, so 2 squared would be 4. So you factor it into that. Now again, this is all divided by x minus 2. Okay, just like in the first video, remember, if you can cancel it out, it's a whole. If you can't cancel it out, it's an asymptote. So in this problem, the x minus 2 on top will cancel out the x minus 2 on the bottom. And what that leaves you with would be the following. This would be the limit as x approaches 2. And what's left over is just this part right here. So you've got x squared plus 2x plus 4. So you want to find the limit of that. Now remember, at this point, you can just plug in the 2. So if you plug a 2 into this, you would have 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 4. And what that would give you would be 4 plus 4 plus 4, which would be equal to 12. And that is the limit. So the limit of this function as x approaches 2 would be equal to 12. Real quickly, let's just graphically take a look at it and see what that looks like. If you graphed this function on a calculator, the graph would look like this. And what it is, it's a graph that has a hole in the graph. Now, you know it had a hole because when you cancel these two things out, this part right here means that you have, in fact, those cancel out, tells you that you have a hole at x is equal to 2. So sure enough, at x is equal to 2, you've got a hole in the graph. And what the limit means is that as x approaches 2, so you're coming at it like this, that on the function, if you go up like this and come down like this, uh, as x approaches 2, y is approaching the value of 12, and there's the limit. Okay, so there is the first problem. Now what this was, this was uh, finding x cubed minus 8, and when you did this, uh, the x minus 2 canceled out, which means it was a whole, and the limit existed, and it was 12. Now let's try one where you have x cubed plus 8, and you'll see that the limit does not exist. So let's take a look at that one. 
Okay, now the only difference in the two problems is this. They're exactly the same, except that rather than having x cubed minus 8, you've got an x cubed plus 8. So go ahead and approach it exactly the same way. Um, we'll start by letting this be equal to, uh, and we'll go ahead and factor it. So this will factor into the limit as x approaches 2, and we'll use the formula on the right this time. So since it's x cubed plus 8, and again, we'll think of this as being x cubed plus 2 cubed. So this time it'll factor into this one over here. So this will be x plus 2. Then you'll take the x thing and square it. So you've got an x squared minus 2 times x. And then finally, plus the 2 squared, which would be a 4. And this is all divided by x minus 2. Now in the first problem, you had an x minus 2 in the top and x minus 2 in the bottom. They canceled out, which told you that you had a hole in the graph. In this case, these do not cancel out. So even though you got it factored, you've still got a problem at x equals 2. And you can't get rid of that problem, which tells you since you can't cancel that out, this tells you that you have an asymptote at x is equal to 2. So you can't cancel it out. You've got an asymptote. Uh, no matter what you do, you can't get rid of the problem. So you will have to conclude that this limit does not exist. So as x approaches 2, the limit to this function does not exist. And if you look at the graph, you'll see why it kind of makes sense. Let's take a quick look at what this graph would look like. So if you graphed it at x equals 2, rather than having a hole in the graph, you've got an asymptote. And the function does this. This part takes off toward negative infinity. This part takes off toward a positive infinity. They're not settling on a single fixed number, so the limit does not exist. Okay, so you have one problem where the limit exists and the other problem where it doesn't. But anyway, if you've got a cubic, try to factor it out. If you can cancel out the factors, you've got a hole and the limit exists. If you can't cancel them out, you've got an asymptote and the limit does not exist. So there's a couple of cubic examples for you. Now let's take a look at a synthetic division example. Okay, and what it's going to look like is this. Uh, you've got a problem. You want to find the limit of this long function here divided by x minus 2. <clears throat> now just like in those previous problems, uh, if you can plug in the 2 and it works great, uh, then you'd be done. But in this case, if you plug in the 2, you've got division by 0 in the denominator, and that's going to cause you a headache. So what you've got to do, you're hoping that you can do this with it. You're hoping that you can take it and change it into the following. It will change it into the limit as x approaches 2, and then you'll have this. You're going to have an x minus 2 in the bottom, and you're hoping that you can do this. You're hoping that you can factor an x minus 2 out of the top, but if you did that, then the question is, what's left over? So it'll look something like this. Now, here's the problem, is um, can you factor this out? And the second problem is if you can factor it out, what's left over? Because if you can factor it out, then these two will cancel out, you have a hole, and off you go. So the only way really that you've got to try this, you'll, you can use synthetic division to see if you can factor out an x minus 2, and synthetic division will also give you what's left over. So let's try that and see. So just a reminder of what the synthetic division process looks like would be this. Uh, okay, first of all, since you've got an x minus 2 here, you're going to put an x plus 2, or just a plus 2, on the outside. So if this is a minus 2, put a plus 2 here. Now, the way synthetic division works, you take each one of these coefficients up here in the front. You've got a 1, a 1, negative 19, 11, and a 30. So we'll put the 1 here. We'll put the second one here. Uh, then you've got a negative 19. Then you've got a positive 11. And then finally, you've got a positive 30 right here. Now, in synthetic division, you're hoping this. If x minus 2 is a factor of this thing, then you run through synthetic division. When you do the last part of it, you'll wind up with a 0 right here. 
So you've got a little question mark there. The question is, will it turn out to be a zero or not? If it turns out to be a zero, then that means the following. That means that x minus 2 is a factor, and you will have something left over right here. So let's go ahead and run through the process and try it. Now, just a reminder on the process on synthetic division, the first thing you do is bring this first one down, so you've got a 1 there. Then multiply. 2 times 1 gives you a 2, and you put that right here. Then add these together. 1 plus 2 gives you a 3, so you, and then you multiply again. 2 times 3 gives you a 6. Put that up here, so it's going to give you a 6. And you add these together. <clears throat> this and this gives you a negative 13, so this would be a negative 13. <clears throat> Uh, then you multiply. This times this gives you a negative 26. So when you multiply, you get a negative 26 right there. Add these together. That's going to give you a negative 15 right here. 2 times negative 15 gives you a positive 30, or pardon me, a negative 30. Put it right there. Add those together. And when you add them together, sure enough, you wind up with a 0 right here. That's what you wanted. And what that tells you is that, yes, x minus 2 is a factor. And what's left over, these are the coefficients of what's left over, but remember the power drops by uh, 1. So this was like x to the fourth, this was x cubed, this was x squared, and so on. So now the power drops by 1, this is going to be 1x cubed plus 3x squared minus 13x minus 15. So these numbers right here become the coefficients of what's left over. And that's what's left over right there. So after you factor out the x minus 2, this is what you've got. So go ahead and put those back up here. That gives you x cubed plus 3x squared uh, minus 13x minus 15. Okay, so what this means is this continues on with the problem. Now, if this had turned out to be anything other than a 0, suppose it had turned out to be a 4, then that means that x minus 2 would not be a factor, and in the original problem, you would have to conclude that the limit does not exist. But since it does factor out, you're back to this whole situation again. You've got an x minus 2 in the top, which will cancel out an x minus 2 in the bottom. And what that tells you is that you have a hole at x is equal to 2. So now, once you cancel those out, then the problem turns into this. Uh, this turns into the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed plus 3x squared minus 13x minus 15. Well, now that you can take limit. Just plug in the 2 and it'll work just fine. So everywhere you've got a 2, or everywhere you've got an x, plug in a 2. So this will be 2 cubed plus 3 times 2 squared minus 13 times 2 minus 15. And if you stick that on your calculator, uh, it will turn out to be a negative 21. So that is going to be the limit. So just remember, you have synthetic division. The idea is if you've got an x minus 2 in the denominator, somewhere or another, you've got to try to get an x minus 2 in the numerator, so it'll cancel out. So do synthetic division, and if you wind up with a 0 here, that means that x minus 2 is a factor. And this is what's left over. So take what's left over, put it back up here. Uh, the factors will cancel out. Um, then just plug the 2 into what's left over, and you get the answer. So that's an example of if you've got some longer problems, uh, use synthetic division and assume that the only possibility, since it's got an x minus 2 in the bottom, you have to use an x minus 2 in the top. And since this is an x minus 2, then you put an x plus 2 over here. So there's a synthetic division example and a couple of cubic examples.